Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. In this video, we're gonna take a look at an asset from the Unity store called Jujubee. You know, with so many tools and options out there, you know, it's really easy to overlook some of the smaller or unknown assets on the store. So let's go ahead and dive into this one. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that it looks very similar to a game and that's called Minecraft. So um, it's an actually pretty cool asset. So it gives you the ability to kind of build worlds or build blocks or build your world using blocks, right? Very similar to how Minecraft is kind of built out block by block. But with this one, it has an interface and everything for you to do it. So let's, I'm gonna show you really quick um, by doing that. So I'm gonna select the map, right? And this is a game object. And on this game object, um, it has house, tree, item, ground, water, and these are just layers, right? And I'll show you where that comes from. So on this game object, there's a component called the renderer or the Juju B or Bay renderer. And in here, it has something called map, palette, cell size, prefab scale, pivot, and a mode. And the main ones you're really gonna probably play with obviously are gonna be like the demo map or this this icon here and then this palette. Now the map is gonna kind of define your layers, it's gonna define you know the tools that you use and the palette is gonna define the blocks, right? So if I click on demo map and I click on it here in the project here, these are, these are all your different layers, right? And, and that's pretty self-explanatory, right? And if you click on one of these palettes, as you can see, these are all the prefabs that are built in. So you have a stone and water and dirt and grass, that sort of thing. So going back here, now if you click on something called edit, there's a menu that kind of pops up and this is where you would end up adding additional layers. So if I was to click here and I can go ahead and rename this. So um, I don't need to re rename it, but basically it says new layer, that's a new layer. And so if you were to go to the demo map, you should have a new layer listed here. So you kind of create that. So you don't need to create that layer here. You can do it right inside of this window. And then on the right side here, you have these different buttons and this is our selection. This is like a wand. This is your brush, eraser, paint and picker, right? And this is obviously very similar to something you would see in Photoshop, right? Or any type of, you know, like imaging editing type of program. And then below that, this is where you got your blocks. And then these blocks are going to be uh, kind of built or come from your palette. So in this case, we have the summer palette, right? So if I were to actually change that to the winter palette, we're actually updating this map with all of those different objects that are specifically geared for winter. So anything in this case that looks like snow. Right now was actually pretty cool because it just kind of updates those particular palettes. OK, so this particular map uses these particular this particular palette. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it back. You can either drag and drop it right from here or you can select it from here. And as you can see, it's right back to the summer palette. Now, the thing that you're probably most like, hey, lay some blocks down. How does it work? Right. So. All you would need to do is let's play with the brush tool. Now you go to the brush tool and say we want to add some additional grass along this side. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You click a block and you would click where you want that, dra that grass to be. And it's cool because the navigation in the 3D window also changes a bit. So once you're in the edit mode, you rotate the scene using the right mouse button. And the picker, uh, when you select the click down somewhere, that's using the left mouse button. And then you pan using the middle mouse button as well. And you can still zoom in. Okay. But when you're out, when you're done, right, if you were to click done like this, that's going to change back to the standard holding down alt and, and rotating and that sort of thing. So that was thought of whoever made this thought about that navigation within the 3D scene, which made it much easier. All right. All right. So cool. So we have that. So maybe I want to change. You see these little green areas here on the ground. Maybe I want that to be the grass. 
So what you would do is you wouldn't do the eraser tool. What I think you would do is painting, right? So we're going to paint and we're going to select the grass and then we're going to go here and paint exactly where we want. And that's very cool. So in that case, what we did was we painted the actual object here. And so maybe I don't want to do that. So maybe I want to erase that and do it like that and then paint. Boom, just like that. And it's super intuitive, to be honest with you. I've never played with Minecraft, um, but I was always wowed by some of those those Minecraft worlds that people like design like cathedrals and bridges and cities and all types of stuff. And so I'm not saying you can do that here, but I don't see a reason it would hold you back. It really comes down to your own creativity of what you create, right? So, I mean, if, if you have the ideas, you can do it, right? So as long as you have the blocks and everything here, I think you should be able to kind of make what you want using this uh, particular uh, asset. It's actually very, very well done, I think. So um, let's see, what else do we have? So instead of just clicking in the grass, what if we wanted more? So you can click and drag, and as you can see, you can kind of build it out that way. That's actually pretty useful. So if we want to kind of keep going that way, we can do it that way. Um, say we want to add some additional water, we can click on the water, right? And then we can just drag that out. Um, maybe we want to go in the other way. So maybe we want to kind of do something like this. And so now we're adding more water here. And say we want the player maybe to come here to the edge and we don't want them to walk on the water, right? So we want to kind of build something so we could do something like this. And then if we were building some type of platforming level, maybe we can do something where we want the player to kind of jump from there to there and maybe jump from there to there. Just like so, right? So as you can see, maybe we can build out all types of worlds with this. So I could, could create more water and more a more situation to where we can keep going and just keep building this thing out. And so you can see how quickly uh, this could be pretty interesting. So you could say, okay, well, I want him to now be able to jump over here. And maybe I want this to start to kind of build up. And so you can start kind of creating whatever you want. It's actually very, very cool. Um, so, so far that's actually pretty easy, but there's obviously other things here. So for instance, selection, if you wanna select something and move it. So if I wanted to just move this here, I could do that. I can just click and drag it and move it around. That's fine, but I don't wanna do that. You can also click and go up as well, up and down. Now, if you want to select maybe the whole thing, it's gonna take the wand, it's gonna kind of similarly like select anything that it's connected to. So that's the water and the water is all connected to itself, right? So we're selecting those. Um, but if I wanna take this and I just wanna move it over to the left, right? I can do that. That's actually very cool. Um, if I want to say paint and repaint this and say I don't want it to be grass anymore. Maybe I want it to be brick. Here we go. I can just repaint that group just like that. That's very cool. And then I could repaint this group here. And as you notice, the bottom part is still that. So I might want to do just that, right? Very cool. So maybe have something like that. Um, the tools are pretty, pretty cool. And this is a picker. I haven't used this one. So I think maybe we're picking it. So for instance, we're sampling, so we instead of clicking in here, we could just click here, we want water, we're clicking there, that sort of thing. And of course, still the selection is there. So that's all super intuitive, and I think already you can see how that would work. All right, so something else to take a look at is another small but pretty huge feature is a generator. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I could save this scene, um, I'm not going to, I'm simply going to go file and then I'm going to go new scene and we're just going to go ahead and do a basic here and I'm not going to save. All right, cool. So let's assume we're straight off the top. We're just going to go ahead and do something new here. But instead of doing your standard Juju map, what you're going to do is uh, we can go into 3D object. We can do Juju map. That's fine. And is this is how you would make what we just made. So just 
to kind of put it in perspective, you can add a, a map here and you can select one of those maps or you can let it create you a map and create you a unique palette asset here, right? So for instance, if I just want to create a map, see there's the map there, uh, Juju Map 4. And if I want to create a palette, there's the palette and there you have it. So this is a base. So if I hit edit, as you can see, there's nothing in here, right? It's completely uh, bare minimum here. So if I wanted to kind of create something, I hit the brush and I can just continue to create. And that's pretty cool, really basic, but it does get the job done, right? Now to create something in here, um, I'm not gonna get into it just yet, but let's get back to the point, right? The point is I wanna do a generator and it really works pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this component. We don't need that. And uh, we can even get rid of that layer, right? So we have this and really all this is, is an empty game object. The name, you can rename it, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna go add component, and if you just type in the word Juju, you'll get everything here. So we're not gonna mess with the animator, and we're gonna select generator. And then once we select generator, we're gonna go ahead and create a palette asset. And as you can see, it says new Juju palette seven. I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to generator. Now you can create your own, but this one already has some built-in uh, stuff so we're just going to use the one that's kind of built in just so we can get to the point all right so we can ignore this for now um but for the most part this is your cell size or your cube size and this is going to be like your scale and pivot and the size of the map and we can play with that once we generate our first one so here below you have water and you have ground right so this looks like a tree so we want to change that so what i'm gonna do is hit this plus key and i'm gonna hit a couple times and i'm gonna change this tree to dirt brown and then i'm going to change this uh this tree this one to dirt grass and maybe change this to i don't know if we need to change this to anything i think what i'll do is go ahead and get rid of that one and we'll just leave the ground it's just the grass and the dirt right and then to the water what i'm gonna do is go ahead and change this to water and then for item we have the item tree here and then maybe we want to do another type of item so what i'll do is change this item to maybe a maybe like a rock and then maybe do another one called a stone so we'll just do stone zero and just for fun, we can add another one and we can add a bush, maybe something like that. Or maybe this one can be a bush. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and add that back. And so this can be a bush and then I'll get rid of this bush, right? So now let's go back. So we have ground, we have water, we have some items, right? Trees and bushes and rocks. All right, so let's see what's gonna happen here. So all we need to do now is hit generate. Cool. All right, so we hit generate, and as you can see, we're still in this editing mode. Um, we're not in a edit mode, but this is just your standard Unity navigation, right? And that's kind of cool. So what we were able to do is use all of that stuff to kind of generate um, an environment. And this is pretty awesome, right? You got your water areas, you have your trees, you have your rocks and bushes and things like that. And uh, even the little small rock, right? That's what these items are. And these are just small little items, right? And uh, that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do something else. We can do it where this water or this here ground, we can say maybe this is more like an island. So let's hit island and that will change the layout. So now we have an island, right? So an island would have water kind of on the outer edges of it. Um, we can do max height. We can change the iteration. We can change the edge. So let's bring the edge up to say maybe 20, hit generate. And so now we have more of a island with, um, you know, more water around it, that sort of thing. Um, let's change the edge to be maybe not so high, maybe like 12. All right, that seems kind of cool. Uh, maybe we want an island, maybe we want a basin, right? That's super cool, right? So now you can do something here, 
And then maybe you have some type of game play in the center, right? Some type of arena, maybe. That'd be kind of cool. Um, and then in terms of the prefabs, maybe you want these prefabs on the water only, not on the ground. That's going to be weird. Let's see what happens. Uh, so now it's on the water. It's on the ground. I'm not sure why you would have water. Maybe it's like a swamp. Maybe this water would be like green and murky. So you would maybe change that prefab to like a green and murky prefab. So it then look like a swamp. So that would be kind of cool. And uh, let's see here. And what did I do? Mixed. So instead of mixed, um, maybe we only want it on the water. So that would probably give us the result of all the trees right in the center of that. And so that looks kind of weird, but it could work out, right? So it really just depends on how you want to approach this type of process. But um, obviously, if you do it on just the ground, that would make the most sense. And hit generate and back to our basin style there. So if we go back to mainland and let's just say we change the height to say 12, right? And so hit generate. So we got something like that. Maybe we want to raise the water a little bit so we can bring the water up to maybe something like four. Does that give us more water? Yeah. So it brings more water into the mix here. So this is actually pretty cool. And so you can kind of build on this. And so if you wanted to add additional things to this, then this kind of comes into something basic where we would just say 3D object, Juju map, right? And so we have uh, another Juju map. We'll just put the two there and then we can create a new asset. So what we can do is um, add the demo map and add the summer. So we added that map to the scene. And remember that map is held in there. So maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want a custom map, right? And so now we're going to go edit and we want to build off of this one. So we can do that. We can kind of build off of that. I'll work out and we can just kind of do all types of stuff. So it's just super useful, super cool. And you can have multiple maps in one scene as you can see, and you can kind of go from there. Um, it really up to you, really, honestly, on how you use that, use this program. Um, I haven't really used it in any personal projects, but I just thought, hey, let me show this off and show this to you guys to see maybe this is something you like. All right, cool. So one of the last things I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna go back to the demo scene, and I'm gonna hit don't save. So if we go back to this demo scene and we hit the play button. And I haven't played with this part too much, but as you see here, these are two arrows. It has this little animation uh, script kind of built in to the program. And I'm not exactly sure how it does what it's doing, but it does have some animation script built in. And I think that is here so that's what this juicy i think juicy animator script is and so you can kind of do different different things with that animation i'm not exert like i said i'm not exactly sure how it works but i'll let you guys play with that let you experiment my goal here was to kind of uh introduce you to it and um show you what it's all about you know, I really hope this video was useful um, and I have more like it. And I do also want to shout out to the patrons who support me. It really does mean a lot to me uh, that you guys support. Um, it shows that, you know, you guys do like the content. And so I will uh, do my best to continue um, creating new videos, new content, new tutorials for you guys uh, to uh, you share on your journey of game development and just general life, you know. So I'll see you guys in the next video.